People ask me a lot, do I use Keynote or Procreate more when making a planner? My answer, yes. Let me explain. So Procreate is kind of the artsy side of things, while Keynote is really the organizational structure piece. And there is a way to use them both to make one planner. So right now I'm in the process of finishing up a planner that I've been working on for some time. And I wanna bring you along with me to show you some of those final details to show you how I use Procreate to make my Keynote planner even better. We're gonna level up that digital planner today. Before we do that, take a minute to support this channel by subscribing to this channel, turning on those notifications, and liking this video. All right, let's go jump in. All right, so the first way we're gonna level up our planner is by adding hand-drawn pieces to the planner that we've already started. So within this planner I'm building right now, I have kind of a cover page for each section and I wanna add a quote that's decorated here. So first I need to find the dimensions. So I'm just gonna grab a basic square and put it in and drag it to the size that I want it to be. We're gonna delete this soon. It's just to give us the size. Once I like how it looks, I'm gonna make sure a range is clicked over on the right, and then I'm gonna see the size. And in this case, my width is 938, and my height is 1030. So I'm gonna make a note of that, because we're gonna use that when we jump into our iPad to make sure that we create an image that is the exact size we need for our planner. And this is something you can do with images. I've also done this with titles if I want a fancy lettering for each month, you name it. So this is one way we can level up our planner is by bringing in hand-drawn things from Procreate into our planner. So now that I know the size I need, let's jump over to my iPad. All right, so now it's time to build our picture in Procreate. So I'm gonna start by clicking on the plus side and creating a new canvas. Then I'm gonna click this little box with a plus in it and that's gonna allow me to create a custom size canvas. And this is where those dimensions that we just figured out are gonna come into play. I'm also gonna increase my DPI and that just allows you to add a little bit more detail to your drawing. So in this case, I'm gonna change it to 400 and hit create. So my canvas is now the exact size of that image that we just had on our planner, which means anything I make within this rectangle is going to fit perfectly into my planner. So in this case, as I build out my planner, my goal is to have kind of an inspirational quote next to the index on each of my main sections. And in case you're curious, this is a planner that I am going to have for sale in my shop once it's finished. But as you can see, it is still very much a work in progress and I'm bringing you along for some of those works. As you build your planner, you want to make sure that you have a color palette that's going to stay consistent no matter what platform you're working in. And I've shared this little trick beforehand. Usually I'll keep a color palette right on my screen so I can pull colors from it and then I can delete it later on. So I'm gonna start by creating a border and to do that, I'm just gonna fill the whole image and then shrink it a little bit. And that's gonna allow me to have a little bit of a pink on the outside that's gonna match my planner already and this corresponding teal that's gonna match those tabs on my planner. And by turning on snapping, I'm gonna make sure I can center that. If you're new to Procreate, take some time to watch some of the other videos on my channel where I go through a lot of these little details of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. When I make things like quote stickers or quote inserts for my planners, a lot of times it's kind of me playing around with it until I like how it looks. The reason I'm creating it in Procreate and then bringing it right into my Keynote planner while I'm still building my planner is that when you actually export it, it's gonna be part of that final PDF, which means you can write on top of this and drag texts and do all sorts of things with it once it's in your planner and not have to really worry about it moving. It'll be cemented in your PDF and therefore in your planner. So I'm gonna finish building out this quote sticker. I definitely do not have lettering as a skill, so I wanted to share some of the cute little tricks that I've learned to level up your lettering. One is this little outline feature that you can do, which allows you to take the inside of your letters out. I love doing big block lettering and doing that. And then you can actually have two colors within the same letter. So I can have the outline in this teal, dark teal color, and I can drop white into the inside and it just kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. Just a little fancier than the basic text. The other thing I like to do is to add shadows or layers to some of my words. So if I wanna make progress stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna create a second progress, turn that one white, now I have a little bit of a layer of white behind it. And then I like just to go in with my monoline brush and fill in some of the gaps that end up kind of being created just to really make it look like it has that 3D effect. I 
think I'm putting my final touches on at this point. And now it's time to put it into my planner. So I'm building my planner on a Mac, which makes this really easy. I'm simply gonna click the share button. You can select PNG or JPEG. I'm kind of used to PNGs, although in this case there's no transparent background, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna airdrop it over to my computer. So now that we're back in my planner, I can delete that original rectangle drag and drop my new image on and it's gonna fit perfectly where I had planned to put it. So now I've got my kind of cover page for my big section. I've got a place where I can build out my index on the right and I have a quote that I can use over on the left. And again, when I export this, the user will not be able to change or move that quote. It'll be cemented in there. So while we're here, I'm gonna jump into some of my other sections and add those pictures. All right, so this is the first way you can use Procreate to level up your Keynote Planner. It's just by designing things in Procreate and bringing them in. And as I said before, you can do this with all sorts of things. You could do your lettering in Procreate, you could do title pages, you could do figures that you wanna add. It's really up to you. But sometimes you don't want things permanently put into your planner. So sometimes you wanna give your future customers options. So here I created a mood tracker where people can fill in each square and color code it along with their mood throughout their 12 weeks of weight loss. But I didn't wanna box people into certain words. So you might wanna track how often you're joyful or excited or mad or angry, and I'm not sure what people wanted to be able to track. So rather than filling in all of these words for them and adding my own text box and deciding for my customers, Instead, I wanna give my customers a choice. So I'm gonna leave these boxes blank, but build out in Keynote words that they could input as a digital sticker in the future. So it's almost like a fill in the blank for my customers right now. So hopping into Procreate, I actually found this wheel that has all these different emotions that you can track. And I've started building out some of the ones that people might wanna put in their planner. And notice each one is in a different layer and that's gonna help us export them in a second. So each one of these words I'm turning into a digital sticker. So to add more, I'm gonna click the little wrench, hit plus, hit add text and type my next word. Procreate automatically defaults to the last text you just used. So the first time I did this, I played around with the color and the font and everything else. And now each time I'm adding text, it's gonna use the exact same font. So I'm gonna go through and try to add a good handful of words that my future customers can use. I am trying to spread them out a little bit, but honestly, that's just so I can see them. The way we export them, it really doesn't matter if they're all stacked on top of each other or overlapping each other, so don't worry too much about that. Really what you wanna worry about is making them consistent. So let me fly through the rest of these words. All right, so I have a good amount of words here. I'm gonna turn off that bottom layer because I don't need that wheel. Now notice some of mine are overlapping, really doesn't matter. So our next step is I wanna create these so that my customers have individual PNG files that they can then put into their future planner. So I'm gonna click my wrench, click share, and down at the bottom there's an option called PNG files. So I'm gonna click on that and what that does is it is actually making a single file for every single layer on my iPad, which means each word is now an individual sticker. So let's send it over to my computer because we do have a little bit more formatting to deal with before we can be done with these stickers. All right, so here you can see a whole list of files basically called untitled artwork and then a number. And these are all those layers that we just exported. So let me show you what this looks like. So if I open up this one called excited, essentially what it has done is it has given us the entire layer, which means it has excited, but it also has all of this empty space next to it and we don't want that. So I'm gonna put these all in my sticker folder and then it's time to format them. So my first step is I don't want my customers to get a whole bunch of stickers that are just called untitled artwork. So I'm gonna go through and rename each of them mood one, mood two, mood three, all the way down just so they're a little more professional. After that, I need to deal with cropping these down a little bit. As I said before, these are massive files right now. So you're gonna need to crop down each of your stickers depending on what device you're using. You're, there are different ways to crop a sticker. In a Mac, it's super simple. When you double click on the image, it's gonna automatically open it in a preview window, which gives you some basic editing functions. And one of those is to be able to simply crop an image. So I'm gonna be able to hold down my mouse, drag it over and kind of create a smaller box. Then using my keyboard, if I simply hit Command K, 
I'm gonna crop just that portion of the image down. Now here, it doesn't look that much different, but let me close this window for a second and you'll see my now sticker has shrunken drastically. Even in the little preview window, I can actually see that it says mad in my preview window. And I can even change up my view so it shows a larger icon and you can see all these other ones, it's the full sheet, whereas mad, is just this simple, small window. And this means that when my customer is using this, it's gonna be much easier to grab and drag it wherever they want. Now, if I hop into my planner, I'll show you. Because we exported it as a PNG, it's gonna have that transparent background where we'll be able to drag it wherever we want. They're gonna have the ability to size and reshape it. And it also already has a color that's gonna go with the rest of our planner. So for now, I'm gonna delete that because I want my customers to be able to pick what words they wanna put in there. And instead, I'm gonna work on formatting the rest of my words so that when someone buys this planner, I'll be able to give them a file of PNGs that contain things like these mood stickers that they can then use as an insert for their planner. And this doesn't just have to be done with words. On another section of this planner, I have an image where it shows where different measurements can be taken for tracking. And I wanted to have both a male and female depending on who's using the planner. So I've created kind of an image cut out of a male with dotted lines that shows where to measure things like waist and hips and all those kind of things. And then the same for a female, which means when someone buys it, they're not locked into looking at an image of a male or a female. Instead, they'll be able to drag and drop over as a digital sticker, whichever one suits them best. And this is just one way that you can kind of help create planners that are a little more customizable for someone. All right, so hopping onto my iPad for a third time, I wanna walk through how I create covers for my planners. So I'm gonna start just by creating a rectangle that will be my cover. And a little trick for you guys, I actually have several saved on my computer and I'll just go in and grab the color palette or the colors that I had been using and put them into the cover I've already used. So a lot of times with planners, you'll see people selling three, four, five cover options that someone can choose. And that's a really simple way of doing it. So right now it's just a basic rectangle with a pattern on it. I'm gonna export it as a PNG and drop it over onto my computer where I'll use Keynote to turn what is a rectangle design into something that looks like a cover. So we're in the planner. And the first thing we need to do is create a page for the cover. And in this case, don't use any of those master slides that we'd created that I've shown you how to do in the past. Instead, pull up one that is relatively blank, delete the things that are on it. And now let's bring in that image that we just created. First, I'm just gonna center it on my page. This is going to eventually be my planner, but I want to make it look a little bit more like the cover of a notebook. So there's a few things I'm gonna do to do that. The first is I'm actually gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna use a second piece as part of the spine. I'm then gonna add a pretty drastic drop shadow to give it some of that dimension. And then I'm gonna take that other one that we already built and I'm actually gonna click on image. I'm gonna click on edit mask, which is gonna allow you to crop it. And I'm gonna take that whole image and crop it down just to a tiny little sliver that is the edge. So if I were to put this on top of my planner, it's gonna blend in totally, you're not even gonna see it. Instead, I'm gonna add that drop shadow back in and now put it on top of my planner. So the pattern is going to line up, but essentially what you're doing is you're adding a drop shadow in between. So it kind of looks a little bit like the spine of a book. And this is just one option. Instead of adding a spine, you could also add in spiral rings. That's just up to what kind of look you want. I then want to add somewhere that's gonna have a little bit of my title. So in this case, I'm gonna use a rounded edge rectangle. And then of course your last step is to title it. Another thing you can do for your background is make it so it's a little more exciting than just white. You can of course use an image to create some sort of marble or wood background look. You can also just do an image fill planner and there you have it. So now you can see within my iPad and of course things are still being developed here, but you can see my cover on there already. And you can also see as I go to some of those main tabs, there's the images that I created for my index pages. I can also pop over to my habits and in mood, we'll see that we don't have anything there there, but we can test out our files real quick. So I'm just gonna pull my file window on top and there's all the mood stickers that I put on my iCloud. And so now if I wanted to use this planner, I could simply pick the words I want to track to put in here. So there you go, three different ways that you can bring together Procreate and Keynote to level up your planner. I can't wait to see how you guys use Procreate to level up your own planners. See you next time on more designs.